What's good, everybody? It's your boy, Dre. <laughs> Back with another episode of Dre State of Mind. But this time, I was like, you know what? Let me try my second video uh, format. You know, my second video podcast thing that's going on. And um, I think the first one that I did was probably back in 2021 or 2022, something like that. Um, so I decided I'm going to try this again. Uh, the video format of this podcast will be on Spotify because that's how they, I guess they, they do it if you upload it on uh, Anchor since Anchor was purchased by you know spotify and things of that nature so i decided yeah let's try something different so yeah this is what we're doing i got my got my iphone i got my ring light you know what i'm saying uh got my lapel mic so hopefully the audio was coming in good and um yeah man so we we just gonna get into it so i just happened to be you know scouring the internet uh because i was doing some things on the computer and uh through aol i actually saw like something that was like really wild to me so it says hershey responds to backlash over women's day campaign featuring trans activists so apparently i guess like some people from the right were actually upset with uh hershey um like pretty much i'm trying to pull up the article right now but yeah so it says last week you know hershey Canada announced the, uh, the release of limited edition chocolate bars featuring the likenesses of five Canadian women uh, working to build a better future through their passion, activism, and work in their communities. Among the five were uh, Faye Johnstone, a trans, uh, a trans woman, and two, uh, two, SL, no, two SLGBTQ plus activists. Um, no, it's a trans woman and a, okay. Um, two S standing for two spirit and two spirited, no, two spirit or two spirited referencing, uh, referring to non-binary gender designation associated with some indigenous, uh, North American peoples. So that's something I learned right now. <laughs> I didn't know that, uh, that, you know, that existed like two spirited or two spirit, you know, re uh, referring to non binder not non-binary gender designation associated with some indigenous North American peoples. Did not know that. So Hershey has received both support and the inclusion of John Stone in condemnation from online users. Me personally, like like I keep saying before, I, I don't understand why people are so I guess like uncomfortable with I guess like people like we're transgender people or like you know what i'm saying just uh you know gay people or homosexual people lesbians or whoever like i don't understand like if it's it just seems like if it's different from the norm the norm <laughs> put quotation marks on there for people who can't see the video but uh like the norm like i don't understand like it's it's like what nas has said in hate me now he said uh what was it people People hate what they can't understand. No, people fear what they can't understand. Hate. I forgot how the line goes, but it, it, it's, it's the general gist. Like, people, like, they just fucking, like, they don't like it or they, they hate it. Um, and it's just for lack of understanding. It's lack for better of understanding. And they don't want to try to understand, you know what I'm saying, like, something that's different from them. And that's, that's a form of ignorance. It's a form of bigotry. And like it, it's it's crazy like to me like the people are so fucking close minded and then they get mad over a whole bunch of shit, a whole bunch of shit like that's not even really fucking it's not a big deal, at all, and people are like oh well they're trying to force the you know the the gay agenda on uh on, on our children and everything like that children have no idea what the fuck is going on unless you actually point it out to them. Now, there might be some children who are, you know, the smarter than the average child or whatever. Um, but pretty much like seeing like seeing this and seeing ads, seeing commercials, seeing gay representation um, in movies, film and things of that nature. Like y'all trying to act like, you know, what I'm saying like, you know, gay people don't exist. Trans people don't exist like they do. They, they're, they're very much here. <laughs> And some of them are in your family that you probably don't fuck with, which is wild to me. Like, I thought blood was thicker than water, but unless, you know, you're different from the 
from the norm, from the rest of the other people that's in the family, like, yo, that shit don't fly. So, like, shit is just fucking, it's, just, it's wild to me. So, people who are mad over this ad is it, just, it's fucking, like, it's hilarious to me. Um, it says, many Twitter users responding to John Stone's post were congratul- uh, congratulatory, sharing messages of support for John Stone's uh, efforts towards trans inclusive, inclusive, inclusivity. I think I pronounced that right. Uh, and representation. Others, meanwhile, claim that there were uh, they would no longer support her, uh, Hershey. So you're not going to eat a chocolate bar. You're not going to eat chocolate from Hershey's because they included transgender people, like a transgender person in their ad trying to, you know, support, um, you know, in, in inclusive, inclusive, inclusive. Just trying to be inclusive. <laughs> I messed that shit up. But, you know what I'm saying? That word is kicking my ass. But, yeah, just trying to be inclusive uh, for everybody. Just, you know, trying to... I mean, like... But that that's the thing. Like, I don't understand. Like, people... I, I People make my head hurt, man. Like, they, they really do. People make my head hurt because it's just like... Um, you know, when, whenever you know, I'm a black person, as you can clearly see on the uh, on the uh, on the video if you're watching this on Spotify. But um, yeah, pretty much I'm a black guy, and you know, when we're talking about all uh, you know, Black Lives Matter and everything like that, like there's always someone that always tries to come with some counter bullshit, like oh, all lives matter. But if all lives matter, then why are you mad that they're including transgender people? So my whole thing is, all right, one, all lives matter. It's just, you know, some white shit. And then two, it doesn't include, like, you know, gay white people. It doesn't include trans white people. Like, nothing. Like, non-binary. It doesn't pan. It doesn't include none of them. Like, you just got to be the norm. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, a straight heterosexual person in order in order for your life to matter. So, because they're out here, you know, still, you know, killing transgender, you know, uh, transgender people at, at, at an alarming rate, which, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I, I just don't understand the hate. I don't understand the hate that's going around. Um, so it says others, you know, like I said, others claim that they would no longer support Hershey because of John Stone's inclu- uh, inclusion into the campaign. Uh, Amy Kramer, uh, the co-founder of Women for Trump, claimed the campaign was quote-unquote disgusting and call for a boycott of Hershey's chocolate. That's fucking wild. That's <laughs> that's wild to me, yo. That's really fucking wild. Other critics, um, many of whom identified as conservative in their Twitter bi- um, in their Twitter biographies, um, appeared to claim that they would uh, that they too would be giving up the company's products in uh, in response to John Stone's inclusion. That's, that's 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 really that's really wild. So, some alleged uh, some alleged that the campaign was offensive to women in general. It's offensive to women in general, but uh, most of these dudes out here they don't fucking respect women in the first place. Like they look at women as property. So, if you look at most of these conservatives, and like shit, there's, there's, there's a whole bunch of dudes like out here that. They, they barely even respect women. So it's like, how is this offensive to women? Unless this is like actual like conservative women. But then the conservative women are actually women who actually vote against their own best interests. So this shit, like I said, it doesn't make any fucking sense. Like these conservatives are wild and they need to get their heads checked out. And if this offends you, I don't give a fuck. So... Uh, <laughs> would you go boycott my shit? There's only like five or eight, five to eight people to watch or listen to my shit anyway. So I don't give a fuck. But anyway, um, over the past three years, our women's history program, uh, our women's history month programming has been inclusive. That has been an inclusive celebration of women and their impact. Uh, we appreciate the countless people and meaningful pa- uh, partnerships beyond, uh, behind these efforts. The company wrote in a a message shared on uh instagram so it says the hershey company shared the next statement no shared the same statement in the emailed response to uh next star 
Um, I don't know who the fuck Next Star is. But it says John Stone responded. Um, but it was more directed. Uh, but, it, but it directly addressed. Well, more directly addressed the far right critics uh, she considered to uh, to threat. No, considered a threat to trans rights. So it says the reaction um, in my inclusion. No, the, the action to my inclusion as a trans woman in Hershey's uh, Canada IWD. Um, well, I guess uh, International Women's Day campaign uh, shows just how far we still have to go in the fight for feminism, uh, feminist liberation, and trans rights. Uh, she wrote in a Twitter uh, in a Twitter thread discussing the backlash. I am not going anywhere. I'm not shutting up. I will always stand up for women and girls, cis and trans. So, hey, y'all can try to you know bully her or you know try to. She's not going to fold. And that's what's up. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, when you fully believe in something and you believe it in it wholeheartedly, you should always go hard. Always go hard at it, no matter, you know, no matter what the opposition is. Like, sh- motherfuckers have died for this shit. And, you know what I'm saying? Like, if you got to die for what you believe in, sh- there's, no, <laughs> there's no better way to go out. Even though you shouldn't have to go out like that but you know because of stupid ass people but it is what it is man like this, this shit is fucking ridiculous like people are really mad at Hershey uh, I'm trying to close this thing out really mad at Hershey just because like they included a trans uh, a transgender uh, woman in the uh, in their campaign so that that's really that's really wild to me um, I just really can't get over the, the closed mindedness of uh people like it people never cease to amaze me like that let me just put it that way like shit is ridiculous um now for uh, something i saw yesterday um alex murdaugh uh he was actually sentenced to two life terms for the double murder of his wife and son now i'm being completely honest with you i don't know what the hell like i don't know when this shit happened or i've never even heard of this dude but like how the hell do you kill like your wife and son like so uh judge clifton newman sentenced disgraced south carolina lawyer alex murdoch to two life sentences no two consecutive life sentences uh, for the murders of his wife and son friday less than 24 hours after a jury found murdoch guilty uh in the 2021 slayings of maggie and paul murdoch so this happened like two years ago um I wasn't even paying attention. I, I barely watch the news anyway, so um, I, I, I got to keep up with my current events. But uh, <laughs> Newman told Mur- uh, Murdaugh that each of the punishments apply to the rest of your natural life, uh, adding to this, uh, adding the sentence, not that the sentences are consecutive. Uh, the judge announced that the punishment uh, after, no, announced the punishment after Murdaugh briefly addressed the court. Uh, good morning, Your Honor. I am innocent, Murdaugh said. I would never hurt my wife, Maggie, or ne- uh, would never hurt my son, uh, Paul Paul. I wonder what this... Oh, his name is Paul, right? Yeah, Paul. Paul Paul, thank you. Uh, Murdaugh would... Uh, Murdaugh will appeal the conviction. Yo, this man's name is wow. His uh, his defense attorney is Dick Hartput- or Hartputlian. What kind of fucking name? <laughs> Yo. <laughs> Yo, he definitely got a defense uh, attorney name. But, um, yeah, like, all right. So the court uh, session began shortly after 9 a.m. Eastern time. Uh, Newman uh, had said he would render the, his sentence after, uh, after any victim impact statements. But prosecutor Creighton Waters uh, began his remarks by saying that the state did not have anyone uh, who wanted to deliver a victim statement. So it says the depravity, the callousness, the selfishness of these crimes are stunning, Waters said, adding that Murdoch continued to lie and show no remorse. So um, I'm not sure, like, how, how did he uh, how did he actually kill them? Uh, all right, so after a trial that spanned 28 days, it took the Colleton County jury only a few hours to agree unanimously that Murdaugh is guilty of two counts of murder and two counts of using a weapon uh, during the commission of a violent crime. 
So jurors found Murdoch, who's age 54, guilty of using a shotgun to kill his son, Paul, who was 22, and using a rifle to kill his wife, uh, who Maggie, who was 52. Yo, this motherfucker is wild. On the night of June 7th, uh, 2021, at the family's, um, is it Mosel? Mosel Hunting Estate, um, in the rural, rural area about 60 miles inland from Charleston, South Carolina. Uh, the, sentence, the sentencing closes a six-week-long trial uh, that charted Murdoch's fall from grace. Uh, Murdoch, who was born into power and privilege uh, as the scion of a prominent family of lawyers and prosecutors, has been disbarred. I would assume that he will be disbarred if he's doing life in prison. Um, he also faces dozens of other criminal charges um, over financial crimes, which nobody really gives a fuck about those charges. <laughs> anyway, they're just going to add them shits on. So, man, they're getting out anyway. Uh, some of which he admitted to during the trial. So, he already admitted that he's guilty on them other shits. But he was like, killing my family? Nah. I'm innocent on that. But as far as the other shit, I did that. I did that. But I ain't killed my family. Um, his defense... Uh, his defense team or Murdoch himself hold up so he had a relative um defend him too on the on the defense team uh a Murdoch himself oh defense team and Murdoch himself I'm sorry I read that shit wrong um when he took the stand in his own defense and insist, insisted he was innocent depicting him as a caring father and uh, caring father and husband who succumbed to the uh to a severe opiate opiate uh, addiction that led him to drain his bank accounts, rack up debt, and steal money from his law firm. No, you just a sociopath, my guy. Like, and you just try to paint yourself as a victim. So, he's like a classic sociopath. Like, it sounds to me like he's he's a classic sociopath. Like, and and he's not trying to take accountability for his actions. Now, um, most sociopaths do, and pretty much like you can lie to yourself and pretty much like convince yourself that you didn't do what you did even though you did the crime um no matter how big it is or how small it is like if you convince yourself long enough like you will eventually believe yourself you will believe your own lies and there's people out here who you know there's motherfuckers that be fronting on fucking social media and lying their ass off but they lied so much to themselves that they believe that shit <laughs> shit is wild so prosecutors said uh, Murdoch killed his wife and son uh, to serve his own ends after siphoning millions of dollars away from his colleagues and his clients. He was facing a financial reckoning, uh, they said, and he also included his liability uh, in court uh, in, uh, in a court case over a fatal 2019 boating accident in which Paul, then 19, was said to be driving. So... Yeah, uh, Murdoch lied. No, he, he admitted to lying to investigators about his alibi, blaming his shift version, uh, his shifting version of events, on paranoia stemming from his addiction. Uh, but he maintained that he did not kill his wife and son. This motherfucker might have been high as shit when he killed his his wife and son. Like, what was he? Uh, what was he on? Uh, let me go back into uh, he was on opioids, so um, yeah, he he could have been so high that he he didn't even realize that he did the shit or he just forgot that shit. But more than likely, this motherfucker did that shit. <laughs> um, and if they got evidence and all that shit like stacked against him, like dog, you lying to yourself, like you need to you know atone for your actions, you know, you lock the fuck up and. Just, uh, you know, be held accountable for what you did. And some of these people out here in this world, they don't want to be held accountable for their actions. Like, they, they, they just want to keep on living life like, you know, nothing happened. And, like, nah, like, you definitely got to, uh, you got to atone for your actions. So... Yeah, that shit is wild. Said he's gonna try to, you know, pill it, but more than likely, he, he's not gonna, he's not gonna win that shit unless they have like some, they find some new evidence that exonerates this guy. Nah, like you're, you're definitely going to, uh, you're going to spend the rest of your natural life in jail. 
Now, um, going into, uh, I guess, like, you know, some sporting news, uh, the what's been going on for like the past couple off seasons, uh, which is annoying the shit out of me. And I wish this motherfucker would just retire. Um, Aaron Rodgers, <laughs> the Aaron Rodgers saga with green Bay Packers, uh, says while the green Bay Packers wait patiently on a decision about Aaron Rodgers future, uh, teams aren't nearly as, as patient as they're calling the GM, like they're calling the, uh, the general manager, Brian, I guess it's good. Gun, guns, yeah, guns, whatever his name is, um, to inquire about the star quarterback's availability. So teams are still reaching out, but I guess like everybody is waiting on Aaron Rodgers. And I'm like, fam, like the world does not revolve around you, and other people are trying to figure out their future in the NFL while waiting for you. Like this, this, this man has become like a fucking drama queen. And he's like actually worse of a drama queen than his actual predecessor, Brett Favre. Um, so pretty much like, you know, the whole Brett Favre saga, like this motherfucker, um, you know, he, he retired and then he changed his mind and came back and then Green Bay was like, nah, cause like we moving on with Aaron Rodgers and they traded his ass to the Jets. He played for the Jets for like a season. Uh, they didn't make the playoffs. Uh, I believe uh, they failed to make the playoffs. They were eliminated from postseason contention, I, I believe, at the last week of that season. Um, then he left the Jets, went to Minnesota for like two more seasons, um, took Minnesota to the, uh, the NFC Championship game. He threw with some stupid-ass interception. Um, no, he was there for three years, I think, something like that. Because like, he ended up retiring, I think, like five games into like the following season. But pretty much like Aaron Rodgers could possibly be following the same route. Um, but he's just trying to figure out, I guess, like, you know, if he's going to you know, continue to play or is he going to retire? And then if he does continue to play, you know, more than likely it's not going to be in Green Bay. Uh, because there is, reports are that they're ready to move on with Jordan Love. Um, to finally see what they have in him because they drafted him like three years ago and their time is running out on his contract. So they're trying to figure out what's going on with him. Um, so pretty much uh, Aaron Rodgers, uh, I, your time is pretty much up in Green Bay. I would be shocked if he actually comes back to Green Bay. Um, but, you know, they, people keep trying to put him in a Jets uniform. You know, I, he would. I, he'd probably make the Jets better because he's better than any fucking quarterback that's on the Jets roster right now, which is Zach Wilson. I think. Uh, I think Joe Flacco is a free agent, and Mike White. I think Mike White and Zach White, or no, Zach White is it Zach Wilson? Um, I think those two are the only quarterbacks that's left on the roster. So he would actually be better than them. Um, they do have a young, a young core. So you could possibly make them good, but it's just like how, like, are you showing up to OTAs um, to work with the young receivers? Or are you just going to be a diva and just show up and like, you know, um, during training camp or just try to avoid training camp at all and then just show up at the regular start, you know, show up to the facility at, at, at the, the first week of the season or something like that and have no rapport with your receivers. So yeah, like like I said, like this man is turning into a whole diva. This nigga went to a whole darkness retreat, and like the shit is like I'm like nigga, my man is like went to a darkness retreat. Um, I'm assuming he was in the dark for I don't know how long, trying to come to a revelation of what he wants to do with his future and all this nap. And I'm like, fam, like like I said, other players is trying to figure out that like, you're the big domino that they're waiting to fall, so everything else falls into place. And you're taking your sweet ass time, like trying to figure out what you what you trying to do and all that. Like, you know, the draft is like next month. So, but the you know Green Bay is trying to see you know what they're trying to do. So this man is like actually holding uh, the franchise hostage a little bit, and I think it's just like a selfish act, really. Um, and it's like for a player as great as he is. Um, he, he's, he's pretty much like, he's going out sad for me, to be honest. 
Uh, yeah, the, to be honest, he's going outside. But, uh, yeah, man, so pretty much uh, that's going to be it for right now. I just wanted to uh, try something different, try something new, um, and just do a, another video episode and see how this goes. So, uh, yeah, I hope everybody enjoyed this. If you want to see any more video um, you know, episodes, you know, leave it, leave it in the content, uh, leave it in the comments, uh, cause there should be like a little message thing that's going to be at the bottom of wherever you listen to, uh, you know, the podcast. So it should be a little link that you can click on. You can leave a voicemail message, um, and pretty much, uh, you know, let me know how you think, uh, how you think this episode was. And as usual, everybody stay safe out there. Um, continue to, to, uh, move forward in your life. You know, strive for positivity, strive for greatness, and um, yeah, like always uh, be supportive, support your peoples, and they'll probably support you back, but uh, that's up, that's it, hope everybody had a good day, well, I hope, I hope everybody has a good day, and everybody, let's go ahead and get it, it's your boy Dre, and I'm out.